Hey, welcome back. I know it's been a long time and a lot of you guys have asked what happened to the SSR. Well, here it is. It's back up on the workbench again. I'm going to try to work on it a little bit more. And honestly, a lot of the reason that it's been so long since I've uploaded a SSR video is because the next part is kind of the toughest part of the build to me because it's something that I'm not used to. And that is foot control. So to begin with, you can see I've got the engine mounted and I would need somewhere to put my feet these are the original foot pegs, and if I mount them to the engine, they would end up right about there. That was fine with a stock engine that had no shifter, but that's clearly not going to work with the shifter on this manual engine. So I need to figure out new foot pegs, and on top of that, I need to figure out a foot brake. Since this was an automatic, in stock form it was set up just like a scooter. So my right lever would be for the front brake and the left lever would be for the rear brake. This is a manual transmission engine, a manual gearbox and manual clutch. So I'm going to use the left hand for the manual clutch, hopefully, just like you would on a motorcycle. And that means I don't have room for a brake lever over here. Although I do know some people will run two brake levers or two levers, one for the clutch and one for the brake, but I'm not dexterous enough I think with my left hand that I'm going to get used to that very quickly and maybe I'll just crash from something like that so I think I'm going to try and set it up like a traditional motorcycle. On a traditional motorcycle you would have a lever near the right hand foot peg to operate the rear brake but this thing was never set up for that. It's got a drum brake in the rear with a little bit of a linkage here but it just attached to a cable that went up to the left hand hand control. So all of that has to be figured out to be honest, I am a scooter guy. I'm not a moped and motorcycle guy. I don't spend a lot of time around bikes with manual transmissions. I have worked on them, but very little. So I'm just not familiar enough with brake lever setups over there to really be confident in trying to make one myself. So what I think I'm going to do is first figure out the foot pegs. I was hoping to just order a foot peg set up online that I could just bolt on and kind of be done with it, but unfortunately anything I've seen that looks like maybe what I want is out of stock. So what I've ended up doing is ordering some 7 8 of an inch outside diameter 8 inch wall thickness tubing, some 8 inch by 1 inch across uh, flat bar, steel flat bar. I've got a chunk of quarter inch steel here. A couple of foot pegs uh, intended for a Harley Davidson and then the hardware kit for those foot pegs that I had to buy separately and I'm hoping that with this stuff I can create a foot peg setup that works for me I think it would be more comfortable for me if I could use the stock foot pegs that would put them about here which leaves me in a more comfortable riding position a more natural seated position just like you're sitting in a chair or something but to work with the controls I kind of need my feet to be back here further so I'm going to have to do something more or less straight across the engine for the foot pegs. And that will work with the foot brake and the shifter better. There are four mounting points underneath of the engine that are intended for things like foot pegs and side stands, etc. So I'm going to use those. I'm hoping to cut this plate so that I can bolt it up to those four mounting points on the bottom of the engine. And then... This tube will form the shaft for both pegs. I had initially thought maybe I would just use the tube alone, but I decided I wanted to use folding foot pegs instead. So I will use that to create the length, the distance that I need, um, so that I can then make mounts for the Harley foot pegs. I've already taken measurements of the mount positions on the engine, so the next step for me is going to be trying to make this plate actually bolt to the engine.
I'll need some longer bolts and I'll have to make some spacers to either weld on there or just attach with it. But for now, I've got this tubing squeezed up against the engine with this bracket and that's enough for some testing. It seems like this position should work for shifting. And it looks like it'll work for kickstarting. And the riding position feels pretty good to me. Now I'm going to try to make some spacers to fit between the engine and this plate. I made up four identical spacers and I went ahead and beveled the bottom edge just to make it better for welding them onto the plate. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt these on individually and then get them all welded to the mounting plate. Next up I need to get this bar welded in place so that it's going straight across and I'm probably going to try and bias it, put it right up against the spacers in the rear just to move the pegs back a small amount, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch versus where they would be if it was in the center. I figured out where I would want the pegs to end, basically where I'd want my feet. And I know how long the pegs are that I'm going to put on here, so I can use that measurement to figure out where to cut this off. I've got this much of the foot peg mount done, and I was just about to start making the actual mounts for the pegs. So I was going to use this one inch wide by eighth inch thick steel flat bar and basically bend it up into sort of a U shape um, or a square without one edge so that these foot pegs could mount inside of there. And then when I got thinking about it, I thought maybe I would make something a little bit beefier. Uh, I think it's going to be a little more trouble, but my new plan is to use this one inch steel rod and make mounts out of that. So basically I can cut part of it down so that it will go inside of this end and then cut a groove into the other end of that for the pegs to go into. It's gonna take a lot more work I think, but it will be a little stronger. I'm not sure if I need it to be that strong, but I'm a big guy so it won't hurt to have a little extra rigidity there. I've got a piece that fits into the end of the tubing now, but I need to make a slot in here to accept this. I'm going to try to cut a slot across here with my tool post grinder, but I think before I start that it might be easier to remove some of the material by just drilling in with a half inch drill.
Looks like my bit is pretty bent, so I'm going to see if I can get something else in there that'll work. I don't have one just like it. trying to take off a few thousands which has worked fine for me in the past but it's clearly not working right now I figured I was gonna be making pass after pass for quite a long time and the drama was pretty much over I thought so I turned the camera off turned some music on and then the head came totally off of this burr. So now I'm kind of wondering if I should even be doing this. I'm not sure why I'm having so much problem right now because I've done this in multiple projects, something very similar, and it really hasn't been a big deal. And now all of a sudden I'm having a heck of a time getting through there. I'm not sure if I should keep going with the burrs or maybe just get the grinder out and try to cut through there. I think the new strategy is going to be bulk material removal with the grinder and then go back to the tool post grinder on the lathe and try to finish that off. I'm hoping maybe I won't break bit after bit if I can just take light cuts and finish that off. That way I get a nice square groove cut in there. I finally got one side of this ground flat all the way across so that I took up all of where the half inch drill was. And you can see there was a bit of collateral damage there. These are not including the ones that I showed you earlier. So I broke four bits just earlier trying to get through this one side. And all of these are very squared off ends. So they're cylindrical bits with a very sharp corner on them. After breaking or bending all of those, I switched over to this, which is also cylindrical, but it has a rounded top. And since switching to that, it hasn't been chattering as bad, it's not catching, and I haven't broken or bent anything. So I think what happens is that sharp 90 degree top there will catch and dig into stuff, and it chatters, and sometimes it catches hard enough that it bends this, and it even broke the flex shaft to my Fordham tool one time. So hopefully this will continue to work and I can finish up the other end. I definitely hope I don't break any more flex shafts because I don't have any more around. The other side's cut now and I didn't break or bend any more bits. And this is now sort of ready to accept a foot peg, although I need to do some smoothing and shaping to make it work a little better. So the foot pegs work for the most part, but if I want to use the supplied pins, I'm going to need to cut at least one flat spot. I might just cut each side a little bit flat. I had thought about putting this thing back in the lathe and trying to sort of mill across there, but after all the trouble, I'm just going to do it the easy way and use a grinder. I'm going to see if this still works if I do a full test fit with all the hardware.
since I couldn't get the sharp corner back here that I wanted and this kind of tapers outward curves down the shims that were intended for it now bottom out and they won't align with the hole if they were full depth like they should be in the center then it looks like they would align but I think the easy solution is going to be just to trim a small amount off of here I don't want to lose too much of the springiness of these or make them break but I think just a thin strip might do the trick Have you ever seen anything go together easier than that? Well, once it's together, it works pretty well. It's pretty crazy how much difference it makes just not having that flat edge across the back of there with trying to get those clips in because those should not be that hard to install. But for these purposes, I'm not going to go in there and grind that anymore. I can get it together and hopefully once I get it together on the final assembly, uh, I won't have to be taking it apart and putting it back together over and over again. Went ahead and installed the holder for this and I want to kind of test fit it because normally what I would do is have it kind of go up and back so if it folds it folds backwards and upwards at about a 45 degree angle but this is why I wanted to test because if I do that with this side it's going to run into the kick lever which shouldn't really be an issue but Maybe I can change it just a little bit and get it to clear that when it folds in. Probably never be a problem, but if I put it like that, then I know if I ever need the space, I can fold that all the way in and it'll be fine. Okay, snug fit. I didn't install the little tension clips for obvious reasons, but at least I've got a working foot peg, sort of, for one side. And now I've just got to go through all that again for the other side. I finally got a set of working foot pegs. Unfortunately, along the way, making the second piece, I started breaking burrs again and I snapped the flex shaft to the Fordham so I couldn't use my power tool anymore. And I ended up finishing up with the grinder and filing, which wasn't a whole lot of fun, but it's finished. Out of curiosity, I Googled Harley foot peg adapters and I saw that the things that I just made and struggled with I could have bought a pair of those, something sort of similar, for about $20 to $30, depending exactly what it is. So if I had this to do all over again, I would either wait and buy something that works when it's in stock, or at least pick up the foot peg adapters and not have to worry about making those.
Now I need to try to figure out how to get a rear brake lever on this thing. But before I get into that, let me just show you real quickly the basic function of most motorcycle brake levers. So it's a rough drawing, but this is essentially what you'll get if you look up a motorcycle foot brake lever. Basically you've got a long shaft here and you'll have some sort of foot pad on the end, obviously for your foot, so that you can push down on the brake. There will be a pivot point, can be more centralized than this, but it may be kind of far to one end. Usually that's around a bolt, sometimes you'll have a bearing in there, but it's just where the lever pivots. And then on the back of it, you'll usually have some sort of tab. You'll either have one going up, one going back, or something in between those two. And the reason you put the tabs back there, they can function as the cable or the master cylinder pull or push. So just to give you a couple of quick examples, if you've got the tab that faces upward like this, everything's basically going in a circle around this pivot point. So if you push the brake lever down and the tab's up here, brake lever goes down this way, and this tab will push forward this way. So if you were to attach a cable back here, when, this, when you push the brake lever down, this will pull that cable, which is what I need. A lot of times what you'll see is that with a master cylinder, so you've got hydraulic disc brakes, then you'll have the tab back here and you'll actually have a master cylinder mounted up here somewhere. And then you've got an attachment, so when you push down on this, it will push up and apply pressure into the master cylinder. I couldn't find a lot of options that I thought would be even close to working for me that were also in the US and made out of steel so I could modify them. So I think what I'm going to do is try to make my own lever totally from scratch. I've got a piece of 3 8 inch thick steel round bar that I think might work for my actual foot lever. So from the pivot point forward to where it interacts with my foot. You can bend this stuff over this long length, but I think once it's cut down to under a foot, then it's pretty tough to bend. It should be rigid enough to work for me. But I'm thinking instead of starting on that, it's probably best for me to sort of work from the middle out. So the first thing I would need is to figure out the pivot point. I'd like to use a bearing for the pivot point of my foot brake lever because I think it makes a fairly simple setup and it also would provide good smooth motion of the lever. So I keep a small stock of bearings around, mostly for my Chinese two strokes, just to be prepared for something that pops up. And I looked through what I had for those, and this is what I came up with that I think might work for my foot brake lever. It's a 638Z, which is an eight by 28 by nine bearing. So it's got an eight millimeter inside diameter, which is nice because that works well with an M8 bolt. And it's got a 28 millimeter outside diameter, which I think will be small enough to work where I need it and nine millimeter thickness is fine for me. I did have some smaller bearings with the eight millimeter inside diameter, but I kind of like that this is a little more robust. Um, some of the others were very tiny, so I just wanted to make sure it was strong enough to hold up. This bearing should allow me to easily mount the foot brake to the frame. So you can see as long as any kind of mounts are touching only the inner race here, the inside of the bearing, then I can bolt this thing down tight and the outside, which will be where the foot lever is attached, can still move very freely. After finding a bearing that I think will work, and then going through what materials I have on hand, I started planning out the first two parts that I'm going to make on the lathe. The first one is simply a frame mount. This is just where I'm going to bolt this to the frame. And I'm just going to use a piece of 3 quarter inch steel rod and cut it to the dimensions you see here thread it for M8 by 1.25 so I can easily bolt the uh, foot brake lever to the frame. And the second piece is a bearing seat or the pivot point. So this is going to be where the bearing actually gets pressed into the foot brake lever. So the inside diameter here is very critical. You can see the, eight, the 28 millimeter bearing is actually 1.1024 inches. So I'm going to try to machine this to 1.100 inches That'll give me a little over a two thousandths of an inch interference fit, so it should be a good snug press fit, and I shouldn't have to worry about the bearing coming out of there. 
and I've actually got a piece of pipe that is very close to these dimensions already so I shouldn't have to do a lot of machining to get it there. Frame mount's finished, so now I'm going to try to work on the bearing holder. deviated from my initial plan a little bit by deciding not to cut the outside of this down so instead of being an inch and a quarter it's one and three hundred and fifteen thousandths doesn't really make much difference and this isn't rough enough it shouldn't matter for anything I'm doing I just thought I'd leave as much material there as I could and on the back side you can see I left a seat there just to make it easy to press into the same depth each time I probably could have cut that a little more or left a little less there but at least this way I know it's not going to break if I press up against it if it's an issue for any reason which it shouldn't be I can always shave that part down later but I got a nice press fit in there and the bearing sits just a little bit below the surface there so I should be able to bolt this to my mount now and have that rotate freely So there we go. I just welded enough to secure this and I'll finish the welds totally when I'm working on the frame at some point later. My initial thought was to make whatever sort of tab I need to interact with the cable and the rear brake lever back there on the drum, but considering how tight of a bend I'm going to need here and the difficulty I think of trying to make the lever itself I'm going to start there instead so I'm going to use this 3 8 rod and obviously I'm going to need quite a bend to clear the case and get down here I think I'm going to restart this. My initial plan was to put this bend up here and then I'd have another gradual bend so I'd do kind of what you're seeing here and go below the foot peg. But thinking about it a little more and looking at it, I think it would make more sense if I put this 90 degree bend just further back and had it kind of come straight down there and then the rest of the rod could go straight forward for a bit. It would just be less complex. I think that's getting pretty close to what I want. I can rotate it a little bit to change exactly how it sits up or down and in or out. 
If I had two people here, I think this would be a lot easier. I could get somebody to kind of hold it in place while I got a better idea of exactly what I wanted. But I think since it's just me, I'm probably going to have to tack this in place and see if I was right or wrong on the placement. Whenever I look at this thing, I can't help but think I should have just bought a distributor wrench, cut the end off, and been done with it. Well, maybe an idea for somebody else. This position works pretty well for me. It's out of the way of my feet so I can sit naturally when I'm riding, but I can also get to this very easily to move the lever, to use the lever. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and put a better weld on there because this is just kind of barely tacked in place. And by the way, the thing that you saw me making on the lathe was this copper washer, a really copper shield. Just made it really quick, but I wanted to shield the uh, bearing area I definitely didn't want to have to grind anything off of a precision machine surface there, so I just made that copper shield that way when I weld, it can't get into that area. You can see that there's discoloration on the bearing from the welding. This bearing will be replaced before this is actually installed when it's finished. It's not a good idea to put that kind of heat into a bearing. Now I need to figure out how to link the pivot point with the rear brake lever on the drum itself. My initial plan was to see if I could modify the stock cable and get that to work. But right now I'm thinking about trying something a little different and trying to use a rod to connect those two points. And I've got quarter inch steel rod here there's probably specific uh, material for this, but I happen to have this quarter inch steel rod, so I'm just going to try it. Um, I'm going to start by threading the end of it so it will work basically just like the stock cable did. And I'm going to do that uh, quarter 20. I've got the end of the rod threaded, and now I need a nut for it. I guess I could just use quarter inch 20 nuts and that would probably work okay, but I'd rather create something similar to what most motorcycle and scooter stock setups use, like this. So I took this nut, I can't even remember what size it was, but I bored out the inside so there are no threads in there anymore. And then I'm going to try and take this rod and machine it to match the inside diameter of there and weld those together and then drill and tap. Kind of a complicated process. I might even be able to order one of these, but just for fun, I'm gonna to try to do it. I got ready to tap this to finish it up, opened up my SAE tap and die set and realized I don't have a quarter 20 tap in there so I must have broken it and then forgot to replace it. So I've got to get another one. In the meantime I'll start working on something else. Now I need to set up a stop for the spring on the rod and I think I'm going to do it just like the stock cable was. So with the stock cable they had this ferrule on the end of the housing and that would butt up against this sort of guide here and then the spring would go between there and the lever and I think I'm going to do just the same thing for this. These are just a couple of M6 washers that I had around. I'm welding on two to make sure they're plenty thick and I'm using this tubing to go over the end. I used it to push the two washers together but it also shields this part of the rod while I weld. So 
So now I can focus on getting this rod trimmed to roughly the correct length. And I think what I'm going to do is put a tab on the lever, the pivot point here, and just bend this rod at a 90 degree angle, drill a hole in that tab that I put on there, and have it go through and pin on to that. Um, some designs use a clevis, but I think just for simplicity I'm going to try this way. I just tacked the tab in place for now because I wanted to be 100% sure that it fit before I went through an entire welding process. And it looks like it's mostly okay, but I took a scrap piece of that quarter inch rod that I'm using for the brake rod and bent the end 90 degrees like I'm hoping to attach the brake rod so I could kind of test that out. And I've got room, it will actually fit behind the swing arm here. Um, there's enough room that way, but when I press it all the way through, the end that sticks out the other side runs into a peg back here. You can see with the rod through there, it runs into that spring peg. Without the rod, it's very close, but there's no contact. So I think I may need a spring to attach somewhere up here and help me out with a lever, returning the lever. But I really don't need that spring peg, even if I use it, to be quite that long. So for now, I'm going to trim the end off, and if I do need a spring peg up there then I can just add another end on there further back and I think it should be fine that way Not a great substitution, but hopefully this will work well enough to at least let me know what I've got here. It's actually starting to look like a working brake setup. I thought I was going to have to run a return spring from somewhere on the lever up to a peg up here, but it's doing pretty well on its own with just the uh, spring that was stock on the cable. So I don't have to worry about that. I do have a few more things to take care of though. The nut on the back, I still need to thread that, but it looks like now shipping is delayed two days instead of just the one that I thought. And I have realized that I have no brake switch so I have no way to activate my brake light. This is the stock brake lever that came with this moped complete with a brake switch. You can see the switch just sits in this housing and it's got a plunger. When the brakes aren't being used that plunger is depressed it's pushed in and when you use the brake it allows that plunger to come out. It's a simple two wire switch. It's got power coming in on one wire and then it will send power out on the other wire when the switch, when this plunger is out like that. So this is an open circuit, meaning it's not completing the circuit for power to go through there. And when you use the brakes, it actually closes the circuit when the plunger comes out. I'm going to remove this switch because hopefully I'll be able to use it with the current setup.
So what I'm thinking is I can just make a tube to mount to this foot peg mount so that this switch sits up against the brake lever. It will depress the plunger in the normal position. And then when I use the brake lever, it will pull away from that. It will allow the circuit to complete and the brake light can operate. I've shown you so many basic operations on the lathe in this video that I figured I'd spare you a few. So I've already made up this adapter, pretty much just a sleeve for the switch to mount in. And the switch has a little tab on it that needs a spot on the sleeve. So I just took the uh, cutoff wheel and cut in there a little bit and filed a little bit. I didn't file it or cut it the entire depth because I actually want the uh, plastic to stick out a little bit. I also made up this little button basically to weld to the foot brake. It's got a curvature on the back of it to make it easier. But the top is flat. I figured that way if there's any sort of misalignment, if anything gets bent along the way, um, this gives it a larger pad for the switch to come in contact with so there's less chance of the switch malfunctioning. The good news is the switch works. The bad news is the switch puts just enough mechanical resistance against the brake lever that now it doesn't always want to return with just that rear spring. Luckily I was worried earlier that I'd need a spring so I already ordered one and I got it here today. So what I'm hoping to do is basically just put this around this peg up here. I've got a washer that fits around there pretty snug. I'll just weld that on there as the sort of end cap to keep the spring from coming off. And then I think the easiest way to do this is just to weld another pin somewhere on the uh, lever itself so that that spring will try to pull it up. It kind of seems like I got 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag back here between the spring, the bolts, the pegs, all the mechanisms for the lever itself. It's a lot of stuff in a small area, but it's working. And it actually seems to work quite well. I made another nut, basically like the first one, but just a little bit longer so that I've got plenty of room to try and put the curvature in there just like stock so it can set up against that barrel and be secure. I've got this half inch burr that matches the profile on the stock nut very well. So I'm going to see if I can just kind of cut straight down into there. Now the quarter 20 tap that I ordered to finish up the brake nut has been totally lost. The US mail service has no idea where it is. But I have got an offer to send me one overnight, so hopefully I'll get that tomorrow. In the meantime, I want to try to take care of the brake lever, do a finishing touch on it. I don't want to leave the end of this brake lever quite this plain. I would like to have something on there to cover up the end of it. My initial thought was to make something out of aluminum, maybe use set screws or a very tight interference fit to get it to fit over the end of that. 
But then I got looking at the other levers on the bike, like the shift lever and the kickstart lever, and those both just have rubber covers. So I wanted to do something similar for that, if possible. Went on Amazon, started looking around just for something. I started typing in 10 millimeter rubber cover, uh, 3 eighths of an inch rubber cover. And the best thing that I could come up with is this. And that is a 10 millimeter espresso protective sleeve. So apparently it is supposed to cover a steam sleeve or steam wand on a uh, espresso machine. I don't drink coffee or espresso. I have no idea what that is, but it's a rubber cover that kind of matches everything else. And it's supposed to be 10 millimeters. Three eighths is about nine and a half. So I was hoping maybe it'd be a snug fit. Eh, it's not bad. So I think I'm just gonna go with that. And once I get this painted, um, I might put some sort of adhesive spray on there and hopefully it'll just stay in place. It's not bad now, but I know over time things do tend to work their way off. Right now I actually can't easily pull that off, but I think that'll work and that matches the other levers a little bit better. The quarter 20 tap finally showed up today so I can try to wrap this up. I give up on trying to make these special nuts for right now because after all that time waiting and the taps getting lost, they showed up and I've already broken teeth off of all three. I got basically through one of the nuts, but it was breaking teeth along the way. And I tried to clean it up with another tap, broke some more teeth off, decided to go to the other nut that I had made up here. And then it broke a few teeth off as soon as I started trying to get into there. So either the taps are total junk or I have hardened these too much when the nut was welded on to the end there. Not sure exactly what the case is, but I'm not going to put a bunch of time into it because it is a working setup right now. And this is more or less uh, a side project for me, just something a little add on. I'll probably go online and see if I can pick these up rather than go through this again if they're cheap enough. Otherwise, no big deal either way. Aside from not being able to make what I thought was a simple nut for that adjuster, everything else is working pretty well for me, so I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. And I can definitely tell you that along the way I have learned why you don't see a whole lot of people making their own custom third brake setups when they do a manual conversion, because there really is a lot involved in it. I'm not saying you couldn't do it a lot more simple than this. There are even some kits I've seen that will bolt on. Um, they have basically a lever with a brake lever and a bearing setup, and they will hook to a cable. The ones that I've seen have been pretty expensive, which is why I didn't just go for one of those. And I also kind of like creating my own custom stuff, especially this bike. There's so much stuff on here that I've put my own hands on rather than just uh, taking them out of a box and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's pretty involved, so weigh that out if you're doing a manual conversion of your own. If you really feel like you want to put that kind of time and effort into it to have something custom, or if you'd be happier just putting a little money out and bolting something on. With that said, if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something, please give it a like, share it, and subscribe for more. And as always, thank you for watching.